Hello everybody, I hope you're going well. Today I have a video to show you how to export an audio file from Logic Pro X. And this is when you've created a track uh, or you've done a mix and you want to be, this is usually the final stage where you're exporting your audio ready to be mastered or just simply exporting it to share um, or burn onto a CD or something like that. So what we're looking at here is the arrange view and I've got uh, a mix here. Um, I've just got a quick little example here. So the first thing that we want to do is tell Logic how long the track is, where we want to start the bounce and where we want to finish the bounce. So bouncing and exporting can be used um, as an audio term pretty much interchangeably. So you'll see here I've got this little, uh, it's called like a cycle range and it's grayed out um, if you click on it well it'll turn uh, that sort of yellow color and if you hover over the sides you can change the length of it so I'm going to put all the way to bar 1 beat 1 and all the way up to the end of the track which is bar 47 beat 1 so that's just telling that's an easy way of telling um, the bounce how long I want it to be and then the simple way to get to that menu now is to go to file and then select bounce and then select project or section and then it will bring up a little bounce dialog box. The other quicker, easier way to get to that is Command B. I tend to use that. I tend to use as many uh, key shortcuts as I can. And then this will give us a couple of options. I just want to go through these to uh, let you know what the best settings are for your project. So first of all, we have here PCM, which is a lossless audio um, codec and usually the two main files you see are WAV and AIF and for the sake of this simple tutorial uh, you can think of them as basically the same. I tend to use the WAV file and uh, so with PCM you get full quality uncompressed audio. So this is great to do your master in. Uh, if, you want, if you're sending it off to be mastered you want to have usually a 24-bit 48 kilohertz or which is 48,000 hertz. Uh, if you were to be burning this to a CD, you would be selecting 16-bit 44.1 kilohertz, which is Redbook Audio. Although uh, Logic Now has an option, burn to CD slash DVD. So if you were to tick that and you had a CD in there, it would bring up another dialog box. Um, I tend to export my mixes. Generally, I, I find... I don't need to go too far above 2448. Sometimes I record in 96 kilohertz, but when I'm bouncing out mixes, um, you know, this is the best size because as you go up higher in these numbers, you get bigger file sizes. So um, just for simple EDM tracks or, or everyday mixing, 24 bit 48 kilohertz uh, suits me very well. Um, I want to make sure this says interleaved, uh, which will mean it's a single stereo audio file. And then I usually have normalize off. Uh, normalize will basically is sort of a bit of a cheap, nasty mastering for the track. It will normalize the the sound. Um, I'm pretty sure that's what that is anyway. If I'm wrong, you can tell me in the comments. I tend to have that off. Um, and then you've got real time or offline. Real time will bounce the song in real time. So if it's a three minute track it'll take three minutes to bounce out um, and you'll hear it as it's bouncing out um, these days offline is much easier because it uses computer time so dependent on the power of your uh, processor and the amount of RAM you have it will only take you know between five to maybe 30 seconds depending on how many plugins and software synths you happen to be using um, dithering we won't really uh, go into um, although if you're making a final file and you're not using anything on the, the master track um, I would tend to select some dithering um, it's just uh, a way of finishing off a file and smoothing out some of the, the data points in there um, but if you don't know anything about that don't worry about it leave it on none now the other option we can simultaneously bounce out an mp3 
And there are a few important things that you need to know about an MP3. So uh, the bit rate is possibly the most important thing with an MP3. The maximum bit rate you can, which is maximum quality, is uh, 320 kilobits per second. Now, uh, bear in mind that MP3 is a lossy format, which means uh, that it's a form of compression where they actually destructively remove um, parts of the you know audio spectrum usually those bits are non-essential so we can't really hear them um, and they sort of chop out all the bits that you don't really need to make the file as a trade-off uh, a lot smaller um, and they use a process called perceptual encoding to do that it's a pretty genius thing that they came up with the motion pictures expert group um, so that's motion pictures uh, mpeg3 um, they came up with it um, in the 90s and so 128 kilobits per second is possibly I would say the lowest quality you would ever want to export an mp3 at this is the smallest file size and um, if you're popping music on the internet such as making it into a YouTube video um, with a still image or putting it on social media sharing it as a free download on your YouTube on your uh, website rather um, 128 kilobits per second gives you a pretty reasonable quality audio file so they can hear your track quite well but you're not giving away the full quality audio file so you can keep that for release on a CD or release on iTunes in which case you'll be uploading a full quality mp3 uh, 320 kilobits per second or a lot of the time if it's a digital aggregator such as TuneCore or CD Baby they will ask you to upload a WAV or an AIF uh, and a 2448 kilohertz uh, file will work very well for that. Um, if you want to add some metadata into your MP3, you select the right, the ID3 tags, and you click here, and you can pop your details in there: the name of the band, the beats per minute, um, the copyright owner, uh, the genre, things like that. And this this will come up if if you burn it to a USB stick. Uh, copy it to a USB stick or burn it to a CD. This will actually come up on, you know, the MP3 player or if it's a car stereo um, when you see the name of the band and then and the track name, things like that. So if you leave this empty um, and you burn it to a CD uh, and then put it in an MP3 player, um, you will like if it was a, if it was a data CD rather, not uh, an audio CD, then Untitled one would come up when your song is playing, so you would probably want to add in all that information for your MP3s. And when I'm pitching music to film and television, they always want me to put all the metadata in there. So if they lose track of the email or they're needing to use iTunes to, you know, categorize all the people who have handed in songs to be considered, they've already got all your information, your phone number, your website, if they really need it to get in touch with you. So that's usually a must, and you can add it to iTunes if you want. For this bounce, I'm just going to leave it off. Um, I'm going to do offline, and then if I click OK, it's going to give me a prompt box saying where do I want to save that to. So I'm going to save that directly to my desktop. When I click bounce, you can see there it's bouncing nice and quickly. And uh, now it's converting that bounce to an MP3. And if I was to switch over here, uh, you can see there, these are the, here is the uh, web file. And then let's have a look how big that is. That's 26 megabytes. And then the MP3, um, 3.7 megabytes. So you can see the MP3 is usually smaller by a factor of, you know, 9, 10, or 11, depending on the uh, encryption method that you use. So those are the basics on how to bounce your track out, how to export uh, your song as audio. Um, I hope you found this uh, tutorial uh, informative and uh, keep an eye out for uh, more Logic, Pro Tools, Ableton, Cubase tutorials. Cheers guys!